In the context of rare things, rare animals are some of the most coveted and cared about by far. While a rare baseball card may garner millions in sale value, a rare animal is often priceless to science, so much so that the government will often step in to remove any potential for commodification. Unfortunately, many animals are becoming more rare as their habitat is destroyed or when invasive species predate and outcompete them. But of all the animals, one of the most susceptible to this phenomenon by far is fish. Fish are limited to areas with water, and often to specific types and conditions of water. When barriers form, such as dams or the drying up of a creek or river, a fish can be isolated entirely from other populations, whereas a bird might simply fly over the obstacle, or a mammal might adapt to live beyond it, a fish is stuck wherever it has been trapped, and thus there are now a multitude of modern fish species which have been physically or ecologically trapped into their niche, leaving only one small population to reproduce. A good place to start is with a fish in the order Acapensiriformes which have been famously exploited so heavily by humans for a multitude of reasons including caviar that some species may even be extinct. One such exploited fish is the European sea sturgeon, which, despite being a once stable population across the Atlantic Ocean, now is only known to come into one river in France to breed. Efforts are in place to restore the population via captive breeding and stocking, but it is estimated that less than a thousand individuals exist right now. While exploitation is often the cause for a reduced population size, it isn't always the reason that fish become rare. Habitat loss is another common cause, and as humans continue to spread their reach and urbanize the world even further, species will continue to lose their habitat and breeding grounds to people. On a much smaller note than the European sea sturgeon, the kissing loach is a small loach known to three locations in Japan, though each population is sufficiently isolated from the rest. As cities continue to be built, this fish will approach functional extinction in the wild, but for now, the population is estimated to be about 800 individuals. It might be easy to imagine how a freshwater fish could lose habitat and find itself isolated, being that they often exist in streams and rivers which are only so large. But conceptualizing a rare ocean fish is a bit harder. Yet, the small-toothed sawfish finds itself in exactly that situation. Due to the stunning design of its snout, it, like many other sawfish species, have been heavily exploited and overfished for as long as humans have had the chance. Though recent conservation efforts have been put in place, this fish currently has a population under 700 individuals. Sometimes the increasing rarity of a fish isn't the result of our exploitation, but rather the result of our own mistakes. Many invasive, introduced species have been spread throughout the world by complete accident or ignorance, as countries are so connected now with transportation that allows particularly resilient individuals to hitch a ride from their native area to an area where they're invasive. When these invasive species arrive in a new location, their populations often explode and destroy the native ecosystem, as they have no natural predators and everything around them has yet to adapt to their presence. Native fish are often outcompeted and pushed to small, isolated populations. This is what happened with the tequila split fin, a Mexican minnow which at one time occupied a good chunk of area, but right now is limited to a single pool which is only 13 feet long. And even in this 13 feet long pool which contains their entire wild population, they are outnumbered 6 to 1 by invasive guppies. Right now, it is estimated that their population size is below 500. Funnily enough, even when humans are messing everything up and increasing the rarity of these species, we can't compete with the rarity that Mother Nature herself creates. Many of the most rare fish aren't that way because of human exploitation or urbanization, but because they occupy a niche so specific that there is simply no room for a larger population. One such example is the Devil's Hole pupfish, which has found itself living exclusively in one deep cavern called Devil's Hole in Nevada. While humans have certainly threatened this species, there is no evidence that the Devil's Hole pupfish has lived anywhere else, and thus likely evolved when it was isolated here during a high water event. 
Of all the rare fish, the Devil's Hole pupfish has most captured the public eye, and has twice yearly population counts, giving us an accurate number of individuals left in the population. As of September 29, 2022, the population count was 263 fish, the largest it's been in two decades, a testament to how conservation efforts can truly pay off in preserving a rare species. But even more extreme than living in a hole in the desert is living in an underground cave. Water systems often make their way through caves, though this process is deep underground. However, in some parts of the US, there are caves which flow into and out of the surface, creating areas of pitch black, narrow cave pools. One would think these caves would be destitute, with no food and no way for anything to survive. But because of the ability to feed on bat poop, some invertebrates have been found living in these lightless waters. And of course, where invertebrates can be found, predators will adapt, and thus, the beautiful phenomenon of cave fish. Cave fish are blind, pale fish adapted to a slow life in pitch black cave waters. By nature, they are so self-isolated that many species are only found in single cave systems, thus leading to them being some of the rarest fish species in the world. The rarest fish species in the world is the Alabama cave fish, found only in one protected cave in Alabama. No more than 10 individuals have been seen in a single visit, and likely less than 100 exist in total. Now you might be wondering how you can possibly get rarer than an underground cave fish, but our next fish actually takes us back above ground, possibly in a stream near you. Hybridization is the process by which two distinct species create offspring, which are most of the times not viable, or not capable of having offspring themselves. Because of this, hybrids tend to only occur when the fish interbreed for one reason or another and then die off after a generation. While it might not be surprising to hear that fish like the sunfish hybridize frequently, or that the johnny and tessellated darter, which overlap geographically and have extremely similar genetics, hybridize as well, what is surprising is the hybridization of fish with little to no range overlap. You might notice in this graphic from Scribner 2001 about hybrids that some families, such as the Ciprinids and the Centrarchids, see frequent hybridization. You might also notice that a few fish families only have one known hybrid, and of those families, only one of them occurs naturally in the wild without human intervention. Angelidae, the freshwater eels family, features some odd and cryptic breeding practices still not completely studied by humans, Thus, it is not surprising that the American eel and the European eel, occurring mostly coastal on opposite sides of the Atlantic Ocean, have been observed hybridizing a total of one time, making this hybrid likely the rarest individual fish in the world. It is safe to say that rare fish, and especially rare hybrids exist, and are not caught due to the difficulty of analyzing hybrids without genetic work and because of our current knowledge and ability to only study what we can pull out of the water. However, I think this list gives a good overview of the world's rarest fish. If there's something you think I missed or should talk about more, let me know.